Welcome to the Song Trust registration video. I've got Philip Holmes here as the songwriter and artist that has graciously agreed to be on video with me <laughs> to walk him through the Song Trust registration process. So we're going to actually get him signed up as a Song Trust writer and register some of his songs. Philip is already currently a writer with BMI. He's been registered with them for years. He's got some songs registered with them, but he also has some songs that he's released more recently that are not registered anywhere yet. And so we're going to do a bit of both where we register new stuff with Song Trust, and we're also going to try to merge some existing registrations that Philip completely owns. So this tutorial is great for any other singer songwriters that 100% on the writing and the master, straightforward and easy. I'll also do a, a demonstration video and talk a little bit about the differences maybe during this video of getting things registered when you're just one of multiple collaborators on a song. If you're following along, the first thing you have to do before you can get to this video is get signed up as a writer with a performing rights organization, and that's going to be either BMI or ASCAP. Both of us are members of BMI but it doesn't matter, they essentially do the same thing. So just make sure you have a writer's account created with one of those. You can only sign up with one. And then once you're in that account, you're gonna grab what's called your IPI number. And it's basically your writer's social security number. It just identifies you with any other agencies as being a specific writer. So you're gonna need that to link up your PRO account with BMI or ASCAP with SongTrust. First thing you wanna do is go to songtrust.com slash sign up and create a song trust account. I'm going to hand it over to Philip here right. and essentially it's pretty basic account creation kind of stuff. However, I do believe you have to verify your ID. So you're going to need your passport or driver's license to get your account created. So just be prepared for that. All right. So we just got Philip's account created. He went through the verify ID process. Don't be alarmed by that. You got to do that. He submitted the hundred dollar fee. All of that's done. This is the welcome screen from Song Trust. You can go ahead and click the let's get started. Just a few things here you might want to read through, like they have a threshold payout of $25. It may take a year to receive your first royalty disbursement. Once your registration is complete, this is a slow process. Just keep that in mind. But yeah, hit let's get started. This is a profile setup and there are just basic questions to help them understand who you are. So the first thing is to help us better understand your needs, which one of these best describes you? Philip is a songwriter. Location, United States. Have your works been previously represented by a publisher? In Philip's case, it's no. With his BMI account and the stuff that's already been registered, he has just self-published those. If you are with ASCAP and you've created a publisher for yourself, you could select yes here and then you'll enter that publisher information. If you've been in a publishing deal, then for sure select yes. And if you're not sure, you can just select not sure. But for Philip, it is no. How do you currently distribute the majority of your music? Self-distribute. CD Baby is his distributor and favorite distributor. We'll just call it <laughs> CD Baby too. This is probably just for their own information. Yeah. Again, these are they're just collecting data on their users, essentially. So these aren't critical. You can answer them however you want, but they are required. So you got to do something. How many songs do you plan on initially adding to your song trust account? Let's do 125. In the last two years, what are the total streams for your most successful song? I think you're... Yeah. Between, yeah. yeah. What are your top three regions where your works are active? U.S. can. Will you be managing multiple writers in this account? No. no. Now, where this... Where you might say yes is if you're creating this account as a band account, and then every writer is going to be managed inside this one song trust account. The advantage of this is if you want to have one place where all the songs are registered, the other way of doing that is every band member would have their own song trust account, and then each person would register their share of the writing. Everybody's got to pay for a song trust account in that case. But the advantage of having everybody do it individually is that if you have other projects, if you've got a solo project, if you've got side projects, if you're in more than one band, any of those scenarios, then you still have control over your piece of each registration in your account. So long run, it's nice if everybody does have their own accounts and you can do both. You can have your own individual account and you can have a band account that would just handle the registrations. I'll go over that in another video, but I think maybe when we actually do a registration that way. But again, this video is 
one artist owns everything, so single writer. Will Song Trust represent your complete catalog? If not, do you have songs represented by other publishers? Partial. Either way, it works, but if you're trying to decide, having Song Trust administer your full catalog can make the registration process quicker with our collection partners. In Philip's case, he has works that he fully owns, but he also has works that Philip collaborates a lot with other songwriters, mm -hmm. and those songwriters also have other publishers, right? So this can be a little bit confusing. But what you have to ask yourself is, are any other publishers representing me? Not just the song, but just your portion of each song. So in Philip's case, no, he's never signed a publishing deal. He's never made a publishing account of his own that's registered other songs. It's always just been him as a writer registered, and that's it. So this would be a complete representation of his catalog. Do any of your songs have a deal structure that is not straightforward administration? So co-published shares or joint ventures? Again, no, because he's always just been self-published. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's the profile is set up. So now this is your song trust dashboard. First thing you have to do is add a songwriter. Now you might have said, isn't that what we just did? But you were just setting up the background information for your profile. Remember, your song trust account could have multiple songwriters inside of it. Each songwriter would cost $100, but you can set it up that way, again, for like a band. But for one person, first thing you're going to do is add your first songwriter, which would be yourself. So the first question, is the writer already a member of a performing rights organization or a collective management organization? So a CMO is a term that's used for international collection agencies. Here in the United States, we use performing rights organization. And again, at the beginning of the video, I said, you've got to already be signed up with BMI or ASCAP, and here's why. So we're going to select yes. And Philip is a member of BMI. Continue on. So the first thing we're going to do is add all of Philip's information and his IPI number. This number can be found inside of your writer's account at your PRO. The next question up concerns the publishing company information. Does this writer have a publishing entity? Philip, just being a registered writer with BMI, BMI allows you to collect the publishing entity without creating one. So he doesn't have a publishing entity. If you signed up with ASCAP and you were told you need to have a publisher account as well, that's correct. And if that's the case and you have your publishing entity, you can click yes. And then you're going to put in the publishing name, the affiliation for that, and then the publishing company's IPI number. So if you've got that, you can just fill that in. Next is about YouTube claims. Song Trust will also collect YouTube royalties for you. You have to think about this for a little bit because if, like Philip, you've already released your music with CD Baby, you've likely opted into CD Baby collecting the YouTube royalties on your behalf and they're sending your stuff to Content ID, essentially. So you can only have one person doing that. It's easy if you want Song Trust to do it. You just log into your CD Baby account and you can opt out of the YouTube monetization feature. It's very quick. But if you're happy with CD Baby doing it, you can just leave it and say, yes, another company is collecting YouTube publishing royalties or no, I'd like Song Trust to do it. Yeah. This can be modified later too. So if you're just not sure, you can leave it and move on and then go log into your CD Baby account and find out. One benefit of having Song Trust do it rather than, let's say, CD Baby is that there's a few more features, and I think the reporting's a little nicer. One of the things being is that you can whitelist a channel that you want to allow to use your music. So if you were to do some sort of deal where somebody wanted to use your song as the theme song in a web series or a podcast or something that was going to be on YouTube, you could simply say, this channel is allowed to use my music. Don't put a copyright infringement on it. You can do that stuff with Song Trust quite easily. CD Baby, that's less easy. <laughs> I won't say it's impossible because I do think it is possible, but it's going to be a lot easier with Song Trust. So decide what you want to do. Philip, do you know if you want to just leave it and I'm decide gonna, later? I'll decide later. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll just leave it like that for now. Okay. And then signature. So this is where you scribble your... Yep. And then you add songwriter, right? You have to click there oh. to accept. Yep. And then add songwriter. Okay. Okay. And it's as easy as that. Now you've got one songwriter registered. Okay. It took us to the next page, which is to add a new song. We're going to add a single that Philip has already released. He's distributed through CD Baby, which I recommend. And it's out on streaming platforms. It's been out for a while. And that's the perfect time to go through this process. Let your song come out. Don't worry about getting it all registered right away. 
let it get released, and then you can go through this process. So first thing is enter the song title. If you have alternate song titles, you can list those. So for instance, if you're calling it something, but maybe the chorus has a word that's repeated all the time, that's maybe what people think the song is called. That's a good idea to add that as an alternate song title. Just because if that's what people might refer to it as, then you want to have that as an alternate title. But if it's all the same, just add the one. Then this is where you add songwriters. The only way you can register songs with SongTrust is if all the shares are represented. So again, this tutorial is about having one artist that owns 100%, very straightforward. However, if you're curious about what it would take to register a song of yours that you're maybe 50% owner on, you can do that, but then you're going to need to go to add a co-writer and add a new non-collecting co-writer. This is the way that you can enter that co-writer's share. Let's say it's the other 50% without having them be a part of your song trust account. If you do have bandmates that all want to share the song trust account, this is where you would add a new song trust writer. You got to pay $100 per, but then essentially those writers are all consenting to, to share this account and have royalties be collected into one account. For this tutorial, we're going to just work with one. I, I do think I'm going to try to do a band registration as well, just to show the differences, but let's stick to the script here. First, it's just asking you to confirm that you are the one and only sole writer here. So they ask, did you collaborate with anyone on this? And so the answer here is no, there is only one songwriter. And then in this drop down menu, you'll see that Philip's name is here because we've added him as a songwriter. So he's going to be in this drop down menu every single time. And his ownership is 100% done. If this doesn't total 100%, you can't finish a registration. So you'll have to add those co-writers and their percentage of the song. The ISWC code is the International Standard Musical Code, and it's something that gets assigned by your PRO. Since this isn't already registered with the PRO, you can just leave it blank and you can always circle back. And when, once it does get registered with the PRO, because that's where it's going to go to next after this, you can enter this information if you want. You can also enter in your lyrics and other information, but it's all optional and you can update this later. So we're just going to skip past that for now and click add song. It's really that easy. You're going to confirm that your ownership claims are accurate, that you're not lying or stealing from somebody else. Hit submit. Okay, but wait, you're not done. In order for us to successfully process your song, you must add a recording, which is identified by the ISRC code. The ISWC code represents the composition of the song, whereas the ISRC code represents the recording, the master of the song. And this is why I say you should already have your song released because the ISRC code gets assigned by your distributor most of the time, uh, unless you assign your own. Otherwise, every time it is automatically assigned and created and assigned by your distributor. So in Philip's case, it's CD Baby. If it's out, you can go grab your ISRC code and actually finish this registration. If it hasn't released yet, you can't actually go through with this full registration. So you can go look up your ISRC code in your distributor's account. You can go to CD Baby, go to Intensify Single Release, and you'll find the ISRC code and you can copy paste it in. But you can also search Spotify, which makes this really easy than if it's already out. So we're going to just search the artist and look, first track here. I've got it. Here's the ISRC code. Now, in this case, it's listed here twice. Well, part of that reason is that it was released as part of an album, or it was an EP technically, and it was released as a single. And so there's two different recordings and two different ISRCs. It technically, I think, is almost the same exact recording. Mm -hmm. So you could have used the same ISRC code right. when you uploaded for the EP, and this would be the same thing. But because you've got two, we're just going to use both of them and that's fine. So yep. we're going to add this one because he owns it. And we're going to add this one because he owns it. There we go. You can preview to make sure everything's right, but this is all straightforward. And then we're going to go back to songs. And now you have to verify and provide any missing and tax payment information. Yes. And essentially, this is just the third step of getting your account set up. They want to have all your information so that if they collect past that $25 threshold of royalties, you're going to have your bank account information registered. They can take care of any tax reporting and all that kind of stuff. So this is also required when you sign up with a writer's account, with BMI or ASCAP, typical stuff. 
you don't need us to show you how to do this. This is where you're going to add your bank information, your tax information, and all of that. If you leave it blank right now, it just means they're not going to pay you anything until you get this all finished. But essentially, that's it, guys. It's done. You go back to your dashboard. It's got a writer. We've registered a song. And then it's got these two things of setting up your payment info, which Philip will do on his own time, and then to check out YouTube claims and decide. If you want to have SongTrust grab your YouTube information, you just have to make sure you opt out at CD Baby first because only one of them can be collecting. And maybe the next time you register something or distribute something with CD Baby, you'll just opt out of YouTube monetization in the first place. And when you go to register here, you can opt in for that particular song. There are other cool things that SongTrust can do, like set list registrations. If you're on tour and you're playing a bunch of clubs, you can register those set lists and that qualifies for public performance royalties paid out again through your PRO. You can do that through your song trust dashboard, which is really slick. You can go through your royalties, which gives you reports. You can go through and look at different songwriters that might be in your account if you have a band account and so on. So just explore and have fun. But once you've got this set up, now every single time that you release a song, you're going to come here once it's out and give it a few weeks, but once it's out, come in here and then this is where you're going to register. SongTrust is now sending this information to your PRO because this is a new registration. It's going to show up as a new registration with BMI. And then they're also sending this information to the Mechanical Licensing Collective, the MLC, and they're going to collect mechanical royalties on your behalf that are generated from streaming and again, be uh, funneled back into your SongTrust account. So yeah, you're getting one of the major pieces done here. Let's go through this process one more time to just get one of your songs that you registered personally with BMI, mm -hmm. but that means it's not registered with the MLC yet. Basically, what we're going to do is the same exact process here, but when SongTrust sends it, the registration over to BMI, they're either going to create a duplicate or they're going to merge. And if there's a duplicate, you can contact BMI and say, hey, I need these merged and they can do it for you. But hopefully if all the information matches up exactly, because they're going to say, oh, this song is already here with this IPI number from this writer, then essentially the work registration with BMI will just eventually update to show Song Trust as being the publisher rather than Philip having the 200% collection with BMI. Or if you're an ASCAP writer and you had a self-created publishing entity, then Song Trust is going to be the admin listed instead of your self-created publishing entity on your ASCAP listing. So we're going to go to songs and then add song. Really not going to allow us to do anything else until we get payment methods. So we'll get that set up first. Okay. Philip entered all of his payment information. So now they can direct deposit to his bank account and he's got his W9 filled out. So all the tax stuff is done and now we can actually move on. So if you get held up for the same reasons, you got to take a second to do that. Okay. So one of the songs that Philip has already released is called Left with the Late Night. Left let's with the Late one. Night. <laughs> Any alternate song titles? I let's uncapitalize with. I think that's what it's registered under. Cool. And the, I guess. Does that matter? No. Because most of these things will auto get corrected. Like BMI a lot of times makes everything all caps. Right. Right. That sort of thing can matter with how it might show up on Spotify, but this has but nothing to do with that. That doesn't matter. So yeah, capitalizations aren't going to matter. Okay. However, when in doubt, that's what alternate song titles are for. If you're like, well, I spelled it this way or it could be spelled this way, like use your alternate song titles. All right. Again, there's only one songwriter. And it's Philip with 100%. Now, this one already has been registered with BMI. So we can actually go look up his ISWC code right now. Here's Philip's dashboard at BMI. We're going to click on left with the late night and it pulls up this registration window here. And here's the ISWC code. I'm going to copy that. Go back in here. Paste it in. Do you have your lyrics wrote down anywhere for there? Not with me, but I can do that later. Too. You can always do this later. Um, adding the lyrics might just help them figure out if there are two songs that mm. overlap in some way that they're trying to decipher somehow. I mean, in general, that's what these codes and your between your ISWC code and your ISRC code. 
it's probably going to handle any discrepancies, but they ask for some reason. So if you've got them, I would put them in there. Okay, it looks like our code is not correctly formatted. My guess is that little period shouldn't be there. And then the second one too, or does that? Let's try that. And again, they're just saying, hey, make sure you're not infringing on anybody else's <laughs> copyright. So don't claim 100% if you don't own 100%. And then again, it's going to ask for the ISRC code. We're going to look it up. This is easy to just look up, but was this released as a single end? Yeah. So just we're going to, I'm going to show you just so that you can see how this works. So if you log into your CD Baby account and then go to albums and singles, you'll see everything that was released. And so here's one of the releases left with the late night. It's also on this album. Yep. I'm going to go here first. If you hit view edit under tracks and audio, here's your ISRC code. So you can get it directly from your distributor. And if you're not using CD Baby, you'll still be able to find it somewhere else. Just go dig around until you find it. And then you could do that. You can grab that ISRC code, and then you could also grab the specific one from the album release. So if we go take a look at that, and then we go into tracks and audio, here it is, the first track with another ISRC code. But because it's already released, it's just so much easier to do it right mm -hmm. here. Both of them show up, hit add, all done. All right, so this is just a list of the songs that he has just registered. And this takes some time. It will get registered with the MLC probably quicker than it's going to get registered with your PRO, especially if you're merging stuff. Don't be surprised if it takes six months longer. Just have patience. Know that if things come in the meantime, they are often going to just get paid out once all of this gets connected. So just don't panic. Be patient. If you've done all these steps correctly and everything is aligned, everything should be good to go. And you can always try reaching out to support too if you've got questions. All right, Great. you can continue on with all your other registrations and I will hopefully have another link for the band registration possibilities coming soon, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.